Okay. Welcome back, Icarus fans, to another exhibition match. This time I'm in Tanya Transfer between Nail and J Raccoons. We've seen a lot of Nail games today. J Raccoon is the top rank. Nail going Grekum, by the way, in the bottom left corner. He randomed into Grekum. And J Raccoon probably also going Grekum at the, should say the northeast corner of the map. No, he's going CISO. Grekum versus CISO. <laughs> the matchup that pretty much decided the balance of the game for the last year, and yet I haven't seen it in. Well, as much as I've seen Grekum Mirrors or Vecure matches, actually. Though I have still seen it a fair amount recently, but yes. This is the matchup that has determined Akron balance since version 1.1.1.0, which was about a year ago. Actually, a year and a half ago now. So, this is going to be very interesting to see how it works out, how both players play out, what happens, ultimately. Because much has changed as a result of trying to make sure that this matchup works nicely. So J. Raccoon is sending out his Marine to the center of the map, north side. Now, Matania Transfer is a map we have seen... Actually, haven't seen in a while. No one really played it in the tournament much. It's a, f a large map with main bases at the corner, so this should be a, probably a long game, at least 20 or 30 minutes. And bases, natural expansion, quite close to the main base along the south, halfway across to the south, and another large expansion in the southeast, and symmetrically along the west side of the map with the middle of the map having some expansions nicely protected by small little hills. I don't know if you call them hills or mountains. Whichever. Small bluffs, I suppose. That'd be a good word for it. And Nail is going to be getting up an economy start, and so should J Raccoon, because both players, like I said, this is a very large map. Both players should be going for an economic start, not really worrying about a rush strategy, because that will not work in a map this size. I believe it's 360 by 300, which, for reference... Hills is 256 by 192, and I think the last map we were on was Twilight of the Elders, which is 320 by 320. And this is going to be... Well, it's going to be a little while before anything super interesting happens. Both players just sending out scouting units, and... It's... Should I probably point out that J-Raccoon was, I believe... Is that the third place winner, or... Yeah, I think he was a third place winner of the tournament. I believe he lost to Ferreter in the loser's bracket. At the very end, but he's... He is still a very strong player. I can't remember if he, was, he came in third or fourth to Rock Mox, but I'm pretty sure he beat Rock Mox and lost to Ferreter. So, both players are very strong once again. And Nail... It's very interesting, this, this whole setup, because Nail fighting... Essentially fighting players that he didn't get a chance to fight in the tournament because he had to forfeit at the, at the outset. Though, I remember, the first match was between... See, it wasn't... I mean, the last one was him versus... Ferreter. And I don't think he had one against Kron Aberrant. So, and granted, there are plenty of matches between Nail and Kron Aberrant, so that's, that's not exactly a big deal. And Nail is going... No, the first one was against Shaka, I believe. And Shaka got knocked out somewhere in the middle of the tournament. However, that's not a big deal. What is a big deal is the fact that Jerakun is setting himself up, getting his factory up, finally getting some military units out, and setting himself up very quickly for an expansion as well, while Nail is going to be... not building up much. He's at the four-minute mark, just looks like he's scouting out, seeing his octa around, double-checking all the expansion points before jumping back and setting up his economy proper, though he's also jumped ahead of the propagation. So, being that that's the case, these build orders probably haven't been pushed towards... Our, well, okay, actually, if even they haven't been pushed towards the present, they aren't that much. So, Nail jumping back and continuing to build up his opening. And J Raccoon... This Marine hanging out at the natural expansion... With... wait a sec. With a pro... two proxy factories! And a proxy RP. Okay, this is just cheeky. But yeah, that's that, that's what we're seeing, is the two factories. So, this should be interesting. I expect... Nail does not actually know this is coming. He has his Octopod set up, though. So, some defense will be, in, will be available. He won't be going down without a fight here. But this Octopod is still going to have a bit of a tough time dealing with what's coming up. And Nail has a dedicated resource processor on Q-Plasma, so he won't be hard-pressed to get more defense if he wants to. 
He's also getting got his aquapod in the way of the RPs, but that shouldn't be a big problem. He's moving it out. This uh, and this octopod could be joined by a fellow octopod very soon if Nail wanted to. So J Raccoon's proxy will still be problematic, but it probably won't win the game for him. On the other hand, where is it? Oh, never mind. It hasn't come up yet. Okay, so it's going to be coming up somewhere around the four-minute mark. That's when we have it. Yeah, that's when it's coming up. Should be around the six-minute mark by the time we start seeing ETCs coming towards Nail's base. And mechs in the main base, which leads me to believe that... Well, no, actually, it would be, make me believe that macrofabs are incoming, except for the fact that there's no Q-plasma RPs. Even the proxy one is still a liquid crystal. So, J Raccoon clearly not going for a tech rush quite yet, but he is going for a unit rush, and trying to do both at the same time is extremely difficult, especially when you're dealing with someone around the same skill level, so I would not recommend it. Nail, very quickly getting, well, sort of quickly getting advanced rushes, on schedule, basically. The 5-minute mark should have air units by the 6-minute mark, so this assault will still be kind of difficult to pull off, and J. Raccoon not paying attention to it, not building up units, it's up, it should be going, but he's getting machinery instead. I think he might be going for Tornadas, actually. Or tanks. That would be unusual. No, one of them is going for ATHC. No, for mechs! Okay. This... I fail to understand. ATHCs should be coming out any time now, or possibly tanks. Tanks would be the only reason I can think of why he would go for machinery so soon. But he has three factories and no units coming out of them, which is kind of wasteful. If he didn't have this factory in the main base, although it might be that he's planning on echoing out the proxy at some point, but if he didn't have the factory in the main base, he'd have just that much more money to use to build tanks with. So I'm a little bit confused. Most players do not get machinery early on as CISO anymore. Used to be you would just because you could use it to get Tornads, because Tornads being detectors were very popular with ATHC rushes and against fire pods and everything. But now times they don't come up too much. They're quite expensive and really ATHCs are detectors, so why bother getting Tornads except for bomb rings? And for bombings it's great, but bombing isn't going to come up until a bit later in the game. Thus, machinery rushing is not really common. I think he might have intended to go for ground units instead of machinery. So, this may be just something that's meant to come up later on. It may be that he's planning on building defense turrets by this expansion, by this proxy here, which is unusual for proxy because proxies are intended to be dealing damage before they deal before they are dealt damage too. And macrofab coming up from the mech, so definitely building out the macrofab. Possibly using machinery to build up healers, though in that case I would have recommended waiting until the macro pad was halfway done first, like now. But, nope, there's ATHC coming up, so ATHCs are finally coming up. Macro pad will be coming up. Usually with macro pad people go for mark tanks, but once again, that's where ground units would have been useful and machinery is totally pointless. However, Nail pointing out he has built turrets and proxies, and I suppose I could see the point of having turrets and proxies, it's just that... Generally, with the proxies found out, it's already too late. Although, if you have a turret there, I guess that does help. I mean, it does mean the opponent has a much harder time dealing with the proxy, and by the time they've dealt with it, your main base is already developed to the point, and you've expanded to the point that you're basically unstoppable. So I could see an argument for it, it's just, I've never really seen it done in RTS games before. Though, on the other hand, Akron, I've noticed, proxies tend to be very large and elaborate. I mean, this one is a full-on base. You have RPs built up, everything but the importer, really. And back here at the northwest base, a mech is looking quite suspicious. However, Nail getting attacked by DTHC at the 8 minute mark near the present. No Spire units yet, no air units at all from the looks of it. Except for, well, sorry, there's one. should say, there is one unit that was coming up. Look at like a far... A Sepipod, actually. A Sepipod going towards the mech. A bit of a standoff, but likely the Sepipod will just barely win. And this is really the distraction, though. It looks like Nail might have actually missed the proxy base. I I almost, I want to doubt that he has, because he should be on the path, but he might barely have missed it. Maybe the Sebipod vision range might have been just small enough that he missed that base, meaning that he's not going to be easily able to stop it, even though Jericho has essentially been treating it like any other base rather than trying to set it up for quick units. He's just been setting it up, and basically that's his natural expansion. His natural expansion is... is Nail's natural expansion. No, that sounds really bizarre, but that's what's happening. And Nail setting up. He is setting up towards the south base, not towards his natural. And apparently this... And this mech is going to... Well, okay, it's... That Sepipod will 
not be able to spot the base, not going towards it. Apparently that mech actually distracted the Sepipod successfully from the main base. So Nail will be basically not seeing it. It's not even going to bother. At this point he doesn't know it exists and doesn't seem to suspect it either. So Jay Raccoon still setting himself up nicely, but like I said, I do not understand the early machinery. I would understand early grandiose, especially with all this infantry coming up in his main base. Definitely investing a lot in infantry, but machinery does them no good. None at all. There's... Ground units gives Marines a better weapon, but machinery does absolutely nothing to help them. Machinery, all it does is unlocks units and unlocks the defense turret. It doesn't do anything else besides that, which is why I'm very curious about what's going on here. If he's going to build MFBs or Blackbirds, or if he's going to be building Mar tanks and then getting confused as to why he can't merge them. I definitely see this going on in the main base, and Nail has not built any air units other than. Oh, now a Firepod! Okay, built a Firepod and a Sepi Pod, and his Firepod will also miss. He'll see the mech, and that mech has been successful as a distraction. Oh, and apparently Jericho in the chat mentioning he made machinery to keep his options open. And while I understand that, it's also 50 LC and 40 QP, which could have been spent elsewhere better and earlier. However, at this point in this map, and this way the game is going out, that doesn't seem to make much difference. Neither player is focusing that heavily on speed, so not getting that quick of an expansion, or that quick of a unit set up, or that quick of an army probably isn't that big of a disadvantage at this point. I mean, both players are still trying to figure out where each other is. Which is going to be very interesting in the next update with the visibility increase. I'm very curious to see how it's going to affect game balance when it comes to hiding expansions and proxies and just generally scouting because Akron has always had an issue with scouting. It's been very difficult to scout out what your opponent is up to without using suicide runs. And it's extremely difficult to just go around the map and see what they're doing. So with the visibility increase, which... Uh, probably is, I don't know how big it's going to be exactly, but the visibility upgrade is going to be very interesting for that. Probably will have a lot more small proxy bases. Probably won't have this same setup where proxies are, like I said, entire full-fledged bases on their own. And a frigate coming up, two frigates. Both of these units do not require machinery, by the way, so nothing thus far has been built using it. And... Here comes Jericho's infantry swarm, and as we're seeing further in the future, they are going to be able to deal with this expansion quite nicely. Though an Octopod being built up by Nail earlier on to try to deal with them, and an Octopod will be up in time. But there are a lot of infantry coming in. Special Ops and Marines, and really that's going to be very difficult to deal with overall. However, this infantry is going to do what it can to deal with them as it can, but it's too late. This, these Marines and Special Ops have already come into the base, right at the Impelable Past Edge, deal a lot of damage while the proxy not building up anything other than what it had already. The frigates and ATHCs assaulting the main base of the infantry assault, the expansion, Nail getting hit on all sides, and Marines and Sobs actually going past the natural expansion, only dealing a bit of damage to this Octopod is almost useless. However, I would expect that Nail's going to come back and set a Farapod or Sigpod over here to deal with it. And yes, a Farapod has been deployed in the expansion, but not in the right position. All the infantry going around the side here, and these frigates would actually help deal with it. Frigate ATHC to pair that can take care of Farbots without issue. And here come a pair of Martanks as well as the Frigates, and the HACs are still streaming out, though not not perfectly, but then again, Jericho isn't that full in resources right now. Nail has a bit more of a resource advantage, definitely has more resources in the bank, probably going to get Gate Tech, or Chrono Porting rather, which I would not recommend at this point. Chrono Porting would be very dangerous, to try, a very dangerous gambit, because sacrificing the units he'd have, granted he has a fair amount of hard class units, but sacrificing the units he'd have for chrono boarding at this stage in the game with what Jericho has, I don't think it would ever, ever in this game work out to his advantage. But he is going for it! Regardless, he is going for chrono boarding, which means he's going to have to deal with all these units coming in and find a way to deal with them with the units he has now. I mean, deal with them three minutes ago with the units he has now, but he hasn't built up much of an army in the last few minutes. So it's going to be very tricky for him to deal with this, and he's going to have to really push hard. With the QP he has too, it's going to be very hard because he, have a, he could probably chrono port one pod class unit and that's it, so he has to make a count. He might be able to undermine the main base and the infantry that are built there, that's about all I can think of. However, they're really not doing a lot of damage right now. In fact, j Raccoon not really making much use of them. Mostly it's the ATHCs and frigates coming up. The Marines will likely be used in a moment. They'll likely come in and help attack, but... At this point, yes, there they are. At the 12 minute mark, they are going in to attack the main base. So Nail getting assaulted on all sides. He has chrono boarding up, so he could 
escape with it. He could deal some damage in the past, but he could support himself with it, but it's going to be very difficult to do so. Twin Mars coming in. No Twin Mars, by the way. No ground units to build them up, so just straight Mars, which, by the way, on this revision are an assault unit. They are not an artillery unit. Dealing with this Arcticus as best they can, and with the Reese gone, or all but one of the Reese gone, the Arcticus will go down very shortly. The main tribe going down as well. Nail's only hope is this expansion in the south, which has not been particularly heavily damaged. The attack that came to it didn't actually ultimately come to it very much, so Nail still has the one base, but his main base has been heavily damaged. With Chrono Party, however, and this causally independent base, he's probably going to send back some units. Some of these Polyclass units are likely to be Chrono Party back to this base to try to stop the forces of J Raccoon before they're able to deal too much damage. These Octopods, particularly, I'm guessing they're going to go back and get Chronoported. So keep an eye out for that one. J Raccoon, on the other hand, from his point of view, is dealing enough damage that it won't much matter. The Octopods getting distracted by the infantry, and I don't know if J Raccoon is going to be sending back the units, and... Sorry, Nail is going to be sending back the units, and it looks like, yes, he is Chronoporting those units. He does have a Chronoport coming up fairly soon. And here we go. Pause, Chronoport Uppercut coming up, and where is that Chronoport? The Oxbots, here we are, there they are, coming in, damaging the infantry from behind, and with themselves. So he, he's double Chronoporting a bit, but this is, this ultimately won't happen. The, the second Chronoport is ultimately not going to happen, it, it can't. It, but still, coming in with essentially echoed Chronoports, trying to do what he can with this, which might actually work, however... It really will come down to whether or not it works with these two these two octopods because J Raccoon is not a chronoporting, so it's not going to affect anything later on. It's not going to cause any paradoxes or anything that might change anything. So really, two octopods need to be the ones dealing the damage. It can't be using any other crazy trick. So Nail, however, his secondary base getting heavily attacked, and this is going to be after the chronoport. So the chronoport remains causally consistent, so Nail, once again, actually making that chronoporting possibly pay off because this attack here is dependent on those units not dying, which they will. Nail having destroyed them with a the chronoported octopod. And it looks like he will actually be able to defend his main base. We will see on the blue time wave whether or not he ultimately was able to, but it would appear that he has been. So it looks like chronoporting at least saved his life for, or saved his game for now. Not really his life. Life isn't threatened by this game. But the outcome of the game is threatened by the events in the game. And it looks like he has at least salvaged the game somewhat so he can hold off additional attacks for a little while, but he's still in a bad way. His main base has been heavily damaged, losing his Arcticus, losing some of his reefs, losing part of his triad, and this is going to be tough for him to deal with. He doesn't have a lot to deal damage with yet, but he does have... Oh, right, and of course, his Octopods having been moved as part of the attack, they are going to be still in a tough spot. Being able to deal with this, they might be able to deal with this, probably will be able to, but it this could cause some small chaotic effects with the way the damage is dealt to the units. So I think Nail, oh, Nail is actually surrendering. Yes, Nail has surrendered. He, well, he's GG, which is close enough. And J. Raccoon, like I said, Chrono Porting bought him a little bit of time, which is the entire point of time travel, really. But he is not able to use it well enough, unfortunately, even though he did manage to save his main base, he still has been on the back foot this whole game with this base, this proxy base that Jirukin built that's better developed than his main base. He is essentially going to... He has no will... He has no way out, really, even with chronoporting. He can do some cheeky tricks. He can save his base from time to time, but now that this secondary base has been heavily damaged, even with the green time wave effects, even with all the units having been destroyed in the process. Enough tanks coming in, so machinery actually did come in handy, by the way. Tanks require machinery, and Jerukun has taken advantage of that. So, ultimately, and these are just units that have been built up in the meantime. Like, these tanks were not there originally. So these are causally independent of that Chronoport attack and Chronoport defense. It's just dealing the damage. So yeah, despite the fact that Nail is taking less damage, ultimately in the unplayable past, he is still in a really bad spot, and I don't see him getting enough resources to get out of this, or getting a strong enough, solid enough hidden position. Really, that's the most important yet. Oh, apparently... Okay, Jericho in the chat pointing out this game is not yet over. Which means I gotta be very curious what's gonna happen on this. <sighs> okay, welcome back, Acorn fans. Sorry about that. My machine locked up again. I'm gonna have to investigate this. However, back on, so just get back to the game. And where we left off, we had 
Nail, just finishing off, fending off J. Raccoon's assaults, and not just his assault on the main base, he actually completely fended that off, but also managed to fend off, or almost completely, he lost a couple of race, but not a big deal, ultimately. And he also managed to fend off an assault, this assault right here, actually, on his natural expansion. However, J. Raccoon's proxy still exists, which means it's still going to be a bit of an issue there, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's just that you keep that in mind that there's going to be possibly an issue there, so... J. Raccoon, gonna have to deal with now Nail's forces. Nail back in the unplayable past has more Octopods helping out to defend from these tanks that were coming back here, and it looks like. Well, let's see, where's J. Raccoon's tanks? J. Raccoon has the tanks in production at this point in time, 16 minute mark. And back up at the 18 minute mark, where J. Raccoon has apparently destroyed Nail's base, though it's hard to tell with Red Time Wave will probably tell us the truth. It looks like. Nail is still having to deal with this a bit, if not the red time or the blue time, at least, if Nail managed to save this. And it looks like Nail at least managed to prevent a fair amount of the damage, but his main base is fine, which is the important part for him. However, Nail is still on the back foot. At this point, J. Raccoon is still in a really great position. He still could just get Twin Mars right away if he wanted to. He has tons of cash. He doesn't have Gate Tech, which is a bit of a loss, and Nail does have a lot of Q Plasma for Chrono Porting with. And is still building more Pod Plasma units at the same time. Which means that J. Raccoon will be... Well, he's building Gate Tech of his own. He's getting Ground Units as well, at the same time. And that will allow him to get Twin Mars if he wants to. Probably will be receiving some Chrono Porter Twin Mars, I would guess. And the mech is right here to build that Chrono Porter. And here's two Mars. So once Ground Units is done, which it is, those Twin Mar should be coming up right now. That Mar Tank pair should become a Twin Mar, but J. Raccoon not focused on that. J. Raccoon is focused instead on finishing off Nail's base over here in the blue time of Will, from the looks of it, stop that from happening, or at least severely slow it down. And Nail rebuilding his main base, rebuilding this reef. J. Raccoon not quite in range. The Martank isn't quite in range to see what's going on. And it looks like... Yes, there is going to be some defense, so Nail is able to defend against this. The frigates are dealing a bit of damage, but not able to get rid of this triad. The bubble wrap is still mostly intact. The RPs are being destroyed, so Nail doesn't have a lot of income, unlike J. Raccoon. Though J. Raccoon, his main base is mostly drained, his... The natural he took is still pretty healthy, but doesn't have a lot of resources there. And the frigates are getting stuck here, but these RPs trying to harvest, not actually going anywhere useful, unfortunately. Still, useful would actually be over here-ish, I guess, like, outside of the main base completely. And... J. Raccoon does not have any Twin Mars yet. He just has his Mars. He doesn't have any merges. Bit surprised, but he might be doing that later on. He also has no Chrono Porter in his anywhere. He doesn't have any Chrono Porters built up yet. He has Gate Tech, but nothing to show for it. And unlike Vekir, Gate Tech doesn't help out at all unless you have... Oh, here's one of them. So actually, never mind. The mech is, in fact, building a Chrono Porter. That's exactly what he's building. Sorry. He's exactly what he's building is a Chrono Porter. So once that is up, then Nail will have much more to worry about. Both players will now be in the Chrono War. Won't just be Nail's domain. Though Nail is pretty much taking this chance to recover. Getting Octoligos! He is going to be... Okay, this is going to be very interesting. So, Twin Mars versus Octoligos. I'm calling it. That's going to be very interesting to see what will happen. Both units have quite long range. Though Twin Mars have a range advantage. And it looks like... Nope, no Mars. No Twin Mars. Just Mars. Just regular Mars. Nothing to see here yet, though Mars are still pretty scary. But the Octoligos, they have 22 range, while the Twin Mars have, I think, 25. Which is a small difference. The Octoligos will be able to clear the distance fairly quickly, but Twin Mars are also extremely powerful units. So, with the tank support distracting them, I think the Octoligos won't be able to hold up. But at this point, against the Mars and tanks, I think the Twin Mars would be very useful, because at this point, the Octoligos are having a great time, and Nail Corona porting them back. Nail's current point in the back. And those Octoligos able to get rid of the forces assaulting his natural expansion. Though the natural expansion has been destroyed. So he did ultimately lose that. And his main base getting attacked by a Mar tank, but still, he's he's doing a really good job defending against this. It's be interesting to see how they manage to fare against the units that are gonna be coming in later on, because apparently this Corona port needs to be reordered. And it looks like. No, even with that, that the units have come in even faster in the next time wave along. So J. Raccoon attacking even faster than they did in the previous time wave. And the Octopods, sorry, Octoligo is doing what they can to deal with it. Nail Chrono Porting them back again to deal with the forces. But 
it's still gonna be tricky. Octoligos, while they are tough, they are still they are still mortal. They do still take damage, even though they can deal a lot of damage to everything that comes at them. They have no weaknesses other than the fact that they have 400 health for their cost, which is low health for their cost. So they can be swarmed and overwhelmed. They also have no splash damage weapons, so their main weakness is against swarms. But as single units, they do very well in single combat. Now, J Raccoon getting a Twin Mar. He has one Twin Mar, building another Mar to merge into another. And that looks like it's going to be fine. And in case you're wondering about the locking problem, I actually do have Speed Fan running beside me, and all the temperatures are nominal. Everything is the way it normally is. The CPU temperature is not even breaking 50 degrees. It's 50 degrees Celsius, that is. So it, that's probably not the issue. I'll double check the Open Broadcaster software forums. The software is great. It's the best, the best streaming software I've ever used. I really hope that it's something completely different, that it's some other minor thing that I can just avoid, because I would not want to stop using it because of the crash bug. It, that would be kind of heartbreaking. Anyway, with this attack, though, the Twin Mar has not come in. Jericho and Kibbe his main base. The Octoligos doing everything they can to defend, and what they and their everything is a lot. Like I said, they do very well in single combat. The one of the Octoligos appears to have died. It may have simply been chronoported, but I don't see it anywhere on the map. And this green time wave really will carry the truth about it. But I think that it's I think that's the chronoport we saw earlier, the one that sent them back to help defend initially. So it appears that one of the Octoligos has died. The other one being kept on base defense with RPs going towards the main base, and it looks like. Another assault coming in. Where is that Octoligo during that assault? Not sure, but I do know that Twin Mars are coming in and coming in fast, and with Chrono Ports as well. Nail Chrono Ports back, Octoligos to save themselves, and it looks like one of them will ultimately Chrono Port back and die, but no, it won't. It actually will sur It'll barely survive. So that Octoligo will be able to stay alive, keep its keep itself alive, really. And no, just. Is it gonna die? Is it? Oh no! Why, Nail? Why did you have to jump away? It was tense! I wasn't sure if the Octoligo was gonna live to kill the Martank or die valiantly! But it probably doesn't matter. With the Twin Mars coming in, these Octoligos are gonna have a very tough time just finishing them off. So, especially with the Chrono Porting happening, it looks like Nail did manage to fend off the Assault, but with a new Assault, brand new Assault coming in, surprisingly, well, maybe not surprisingly because of the lack of Q Plasma, but Jericho not Chrono Porting these forces in, merely walking in with them, and I really would have recommended... Actually, he is chronoporting back something, the mech from the looks of it. But no, it's not enough resources to do it, so I'm not sure if he was aware of the lack of resources at the time, or what he's planning on doing with that, but that was rather unfortunate. A little bit anticlimactic, but still might just work out. I mean, walking the forces in is not a terrible thing to do, though if he had a teleporter, that would allow him to simply just get them right in the middle of the base. Which is actually a bad idea, come to think of it. Twin Mars being artillery units want to come in from the side. They don't want to be teleported in right smack dab in the middle. That kind of defeats their main strength. So a bit self-defeating there. However, Jericho appears to be holding back and probably planning on... Well, shit, it's the unplayable pass. He hasn't attacked yet. Never mind, he's not holding back. He simply hasn't had a chance to even fight. He just appears to be watching what's going on with this assault, ultimately. Nail not having changed a whole lot, but Jericho... Jericho does apparently managed to chrono put back something pretty soon. Probably one of the Mar tanks, because he doesn't have any Q Plasma now, but he likely had some before. How many Q player pieces does he have? He has two in his main base, he has one two no one in his expansion. That's about it. That's not very much. For supporting a chronoport heavy strategy or a strategy with chronoports at all, that's nowhere near enough. Oh I'm sorry, he does have two more in this expansion here, but mostly mostly it's LC. He has Hardly any QPRPs, really, for what he's trying to do. Especially with Martanks, because Martanks are 30, 39, 20, I think. So they require a fair amount of Q Plasma. And Twin Mars coming in at the Unplayable Past Edge. Nail further in the future, trying to deal with this. Does not have much to deal with it, though. He does have some units here, but they are constantly dependent on the Twin Mars Assault. And the Twin Mars Assault has killed their progenitors, which means. or themselves, really. Which means. Any attempt to defend from here would be a paradox. I'm not sure if Nail is planning on using that, or if he's planning on moving them away, or what he's planning on doing. I'm not even sure what he has up his sleeve right now, because from the looks of it, J Raccoon has basically won this with the Twin Mars. 
and dealing a lot of damage to them indeed, but it looks like a Chronoport coming in. Nail may have actually dealt enough damage to deal with the Chronoport. He has some damage coming in in the Unplayable Pass, which the Green Time was carrying along, which appears to be reducing some of the damage that Jerry Queen is dealing. Yes, it is. Well, it's changing it up, but it may not be completely reducing it. But we'll see quite shortly. It looks like Green Time was coming in and no real change. Not much has actually changed. Ultimately, some RPs are getting in position, but no duos are escaping. A Faro is escaping, which is enough. And there is an Arcticus out here, so rebuilding is possible, but extremely difficult. With the Twin Mars coming in, it will... I don't think Nail has a chance here. And Jay Raccoon having so much money in the bank, any attempt to undermine would be futile. I don't know why Nail hasn't simply surrendered at this point. I mean, good on him for trying, but... I really don't see any way out of this. Now, if you'll excuse me, I may need to sneeze. Well, if I do, consider that a warning. Anyhow, with Nail, it looks like he is going to be trying to rebuild with this Arcticus. That's really his only hope. Possibly sending that... No, that Faro is even dead. Even that Faro doesn't have a chance. I'm not sure what he's intending to do there. I'm almost suspecting that this replay playback has kind of messed up, because Nail should have surrendered by now. Or he should have been rebuilding by now. And this Faro is moving along, so perhaps it's merely that once that Faro gets the play will pass, but Nail is at the present. He's just hanging out in the present, not doing anything. So... Let's just jump forward a bit, sorry. I'm just going to speed the playback of the replay a bit. And it looks like Nail has... Far on progen mode, yes, it looks like what the Seppi was meant to come to and ended up getting killed in the playback. So, unfortunately, I think this replay has stopped being useful. And if Jerakun or Nail could comment on that, because I know they're watching the stream, or fairly certain they're watching the stream. Yes, Jerakun is confirming that this is a messed up replay. So, it looks like both players have... It has diverged, unfortunately, the playback has messed up. And in case you're wondering, yes, there's a playback error. The files themselves are perfectly fine. We have tools to parse them, and they show everything up as fine. So, apparently the original Twin Mars were actually chronoported. That chronoport was successfully did enough Q-Plasma to do it, apparently, rather than simply walking them into the main base. So, I hope you enjoyed that, regardless of the outcome not being especially climactic. I assume J Raccoon won. I really I can only assume at this point. I, there's no indication that neither player looks like they're ready to surrender or to do anything or any more actions. I think all the actions have stopped happening. So J Raccoon confirms that he won. So congratulations to J Raccoon. And I hope you enjoyed that, except for, of course, the ending and the crash bug. And thank you for watching. Have a good night.